I'm Erin Gruich. I'm an occupational therapist. Um, I've been an occupational therapist for 23 years. For the 23 years that I've been an occupational therapist, I've worked mainly with kids. When our kids are having problems, um, moms need to be regulated first. And so I love that you talk about self-care and putting yourself first. I think that's super important. And I'm happy to share today about like how to help moms with their regulation, um, because that's what that's what our kids need. <laughs> and I speak from experience. I'm a mom of two boys and have had many meltdowns. <laughs> Sometimes we join our kids in their meltdowns and that's, it's not helpful. And it's, it's good to have tools in our, in our tool kit on how mm -hmm. to manage this when it comes up. Um, I, I have like a bunch of questions in my mind. <laughs> I'm going to throw them out there, but feel free to just talk about anything you have planned to, if you have yeah. kind of a, a thought process, the questions I have, because you mentioned wanting to talk about regulating the nervous system. I'd love to hear more about that. And then of course, like specific tools and tips and tricks to do that. Mm -hmm. to, those are things that are rumbling around in my head. Yeah. And it's, you know, I just said this to you, like before we jumped on, like I see nervous system regulation everywhere. And I don't know if that's just because that's what I'm putting out there or if that's just what everybody seems to be talking about. It's a bit of a buzzword. And I don't know if, if everybody understands what that means. So when I talk about regulation, um, I talk about like sensory overload. That's kind of my main focus. Like, We've got all this traffic coming in to our brain, all of these signals coming into our brain, and we've got a traffic, like a policeman directing traffic. And when there's too much information coming in, it's like a traffic jam and it becomes like overload. So this is like moms, you know, you're, you just came home from work, you're trying to get dinner ready. There's all these smells, your kids are coming up and touching you and, you know, it's maybe noisy. This can be sensory overload because there's just so much information coming in. Another way that I explain it is like, we've got a big cup and a little cup. Okay, so there we go. We've got a big cup and a little cup. Can you see those? Probably not because my screen's fuzzy. I can see them. Yeah. yeah. So if you have a little cup for sensory information, you can pour into that cup and it doesn't take very much until that cup is overflowing. If you have a big cup, you can fill it and fill it and fill it. And it never feels like satisfying. It's never quite full. And that's like our senses. So if we have a little cup, and I think a lot of times moms go between little cups and big cups. And if, if you've had a rough day, or there's lots of demands being placed on you, or you have hormone issues, these things can trigger us to go into sensory overload. And it's just like one more drop in the cup, and then we are overloaded. So what I try to do with kids and with moms is to help them like take things out of their cup so that, you know, we can add sensory input in and it won't send us into overflow. So that's sensory regulation is finding that balance where we're in that just right state so that if, if input comes in, it doesn't send us into overload and overwhelm. And we're also not like constantly seeking things. So that's the other side of it is like the people who can't sit still and they're constantly fidgeting. We need to give those people more movement to keep them regulated and the right types of movement and the right types of touch and smells and and all of our sensory input. So this might be different from what you've heard when people talk about nervous system regulation, but I really hone in on like the fastest way to regulate is through our body. So using our senses is going to be the quickest way to regulate. We can do other things like mindfulness and I I practice that. I have a morning routine that I follow, but if we're dysregulated, the fastest way to get regulated is through our body and actually through movement. Heavy work and um, jumping, giving our joints and muscles input is going to be the fastest way to regulate. You mentioned movement and through the body. Um, would you mind going into a little bit more detail of some of the yeah. things these moms can do to help their nervous system? I, I have a guide. And if anybody wants access to that guide, I can put the link below. Um, and it goes through a lot of this stuff. And then yeah, I'm a geek too. And I like the science of things. So sometimes I like to go deep into the science of it. But like the first thing to do, the first tool that I think is really important is recognizing where you are in terms of like, are you like feeling like low energy? And when I talk to kids, I talk about a speedometer. And some people may have heard of zones of regulation. So there's two schools that I kind of combine. Um, one is the alert program, which is the speedometer, and one is um, the zones of regulation, which is four colors. So it doesn't matter which one you use, but like just how are you feeling right now? So everybody just 
take a second and just scan your body. Are you feeling like sad, slow, tired? Um, are you like, am I boring you? You're like really bored. Um, so that would be what we call the blue zone or the low and slow engine level. And then the green zone is like, you're happy, you, um, you're calm, you're feeling okay, you're ready to learn, you're ready to work, you're ready to make friends and socialize, you're focused, okay? That's your green zone. So that's like your just right level. Um, then yellow zone is like when you're just starting to lose control, you're frustrated, moms, drop a one if you, you get me, right? Frustrated, worried, uh, maybe silly or wiggly. So when you're watching your kids, you'll see this, like before bedtime, they get a little bit wiggly and silly, and maybe that like you've waited too long to put them to bed um, and that, that you've missed that window of opportunity. But like, that's a sign that they're like over aroused. Um, they're excited, um, some loss of control or loss of some control. So that's our yellow zone. And then our red zone or our high engine level, that's when we're mad, we're angry, we're mean, we're yelling and hitting and saying hurtful things, um, we're out of control. So the, we need to label like um, Dan Signal says, name it to tame it. I think that's really important, naming where we're feeling because that's part of our regulation process. When we can say, you know, I'm feeling frustrated, just the act of saying that and labeling that helps get us more into a regulated zone. So that is like the first thing to do. And then tools for our toolbox depends on what type of sensory processor you are. Um, so if you are a seeker, remember big cup, you're seeking, it takes a lot to fill your cup. Or if you're an avoider or sensory sensitive, then you've got your little cup. So, and you can have a big cup for movement and a little cup for um, sounds. So it really depends. And it can change too, depending on your level of arousal. So if you have had a rough day and all of these things are building up, you might come home and you're super sensitive to sound, but normally you're not. You like listening to music and you like it to be loud, but it depends on what's happened in the day and that buildup of senses. So quickest way to calm down, either if you're, you have a big cup or a little cup is through movement. So things like as moms, going to the gym, lifting heavy weights, but not too heavy that you're going to hurt yourself. <laughs> um, those things like push and pull activities are proprioception that help to regulate our nervous system from the bottom up. So we can regulate from the top down where we're like, you know what, you need to calm down, right? How, how does that work? Like when your husband says, you just need to calm down. Um, that's not the most effective way, right? <laughs> no. So doing some movement, going for a walk, um, yoga, inversions, like putting your head upside down helps to um, move the blood away from our heart so that we get out of that fight or flight response. Um, you know, when I'm working with kids, we do things like animal walks. And I have actually have a bus that I have converted and that's my clinic. So in the bus, I have a zip line and I've got crash mats and I've got um, like a trapeze. I've got tunnels for crawling through. I've got Lycra. And if I was to pick one of my favorite tools, it would be Lycra tunnel. It's like a hammock. You can lie on it, but it gives you that big squishy hug. And that just gets all your senses just right for me anyways, different for everyone. Um, if you are in that heightened state of arousal and you're looking for some tools to help calm you down, I do have like a toolkit with things like like um, noise canceling headphones. Those loop earbuds are really nice because I could maybe I have them in now, maybe not, <laughs> but they're just like little discreet earbuds that help to cancel some of the noise, like at a kid's birthday party. Um, but it, you can still hear what's going on, just not at the amplitude. So changing the frequency of things helps. Um, weights swinging that back and forth swinging is calming and regulating versus like if you need to like if you're feeling low and you need to up your level like rotation movements is going to be um what you need jumping around changing the the um the rhythm of things um and then like a resistance band would be something like you could just have it in your person if you're feeling like you need to 
change your regulation state, then you could just do something simple like just pulling that or put it on your chair at work to kind of help you regulate that way. Um, I do have in my like a toolkit for moms that's like, and I'm looking at a screen up here, so um, like movement, tactile activities, um, tools for your mouth, chewing gum actually works on like our little tiny muscles in our jaw. So it's proprioceptive input just through through the muscles in our jaw. And it, that's why it can be so regulating like in classrooms and at work. I, I want to interrupt you here to ask a quick question because there is a word I've heard you use twice that I am guessing <laughs> there are many people that don't know what it means. And honestly, I'm a little shaky. I've heard it a bunch, but I'm still a little mm -hmm. confused about it. So I'd like I know to which know. word. <laughs> okay, go for it then. Are you talking about proprioception? Yes. Yeah. So we actually, we learn in school that we have five senses, right? We learn that we've got like our sense of touch, smell, taste, hearing, and vision, right? Those are our five senses that we learn about. There's actually three others. There is our vestibular sense, which is our equilibrium, um, tells us if we're up or down, right? If we're moving. Um, it's our sense that if we're sitting in a parked car, and the car beside us backs up, we feel like we're moving. <laughs> um, okay, so there's vestibular, there's proprioception, which is our body awareness. It tells us um, where our feet are when we're not looking. Like if our feet are tucked under our chair, we can't see them, but we know our feet are still attached to our body and they're under our chair. Um, it's our, yeah, our awareness of where our body is because it gets information from our muscles and joints. But it's also a key player in our nervous system regulation because it sends messages just up through our brainstem. I'm not going to get into all the science of it, but it is so important. And then our our other sense that we're starting to talk more and more about, or I'm hearing people talk more and more about, is our introception. And that's all the stuff that's going on inside our body. It's our gut, which is our enteric nervous system. And um, you know, if we're looking at nervous system regulation, we need to look at, at all of these things. So does that answer that question? So it's any push and pull um, of your muscles and joints. So pushing, pushing, carrying groceries, pushing a baby cart, pulling a wagon. Those are all proprioception activities. At the gym, you do a lot of proprioception activities. Awesome. Thank you for Clara. Favorite technique for you in the moment when you're about to lose your shit. <laughs> Can you talk about that? <laughs> um, and it depends. Like for me, um, it depends on the moment. Yeah. And like, if I just get out, like if I feel that I'm starting to lose it and I can get out for a walk in that moment, that's not always like, if your kid's going to have a meltdown and you go for a walk, that's maybe not um, the key. But if you can leave and regulate yourself, I think that's really good. Just like even just pushing your hands together or like pushing your, like, you can't see this, but I'm pushing down on the armrest or on the seat of my chair and just lifting my body up. That is a very discreet proprioception activity that if you combine that with, with breathing, that that could help you in the moment. Um, breathing is really key because it's going to regulate our nervous system. My answer is always it depends because it depends on your nervous system and what how you process sensory inf information. So when I work with moms, um, they all are they all do a sensory processing measure or a sensory questionnaire so that I can understand what tools might work for them. But when awesome. in doubt, use heavy work. That's what I say. <laughs> I like that. I like having like a, a rule of thumb to rely on. Mm -hmm. uh, just, um, and I just want to kind of remind everybody um, as well, some of the things Aaron talked about earlier about like having headphones or chewing gum, right? Like those are things that you can do in the moment as well, depending on kind of what you're needing. So, yeah. um, and Aaron, I like that you really talk about like it, it really depends. It depends on what you're personally needing. And it also depends on the moment. And this is where it can be um, really helpful to have a really big toolkit, like having lots of um, lots of options of what you're what are your tools that you can use so you can pick and choose, right? And mm -hmm. one thing I really like to talk about with my clients is the more we practice them when we're calm, the easier it is to use them when we are freaking out. <laughs> because if we don't yeah. already have that habit, we can't access it, right? So like doing these things, even just regularly making them easy, having the headphones close by to the places that you know you get triggered easily, right? Like just <laughs> setting yourself up for success in, beforehand can be a huge game changer. Yeah, um, and I think also, like, 
sorry to interrupt there, but like setting, like using those tools when you're calm, but then also finding tools within your day so that you can be more in this regulated state, in this just right state. Because I did a talk a couple of weeks ago on my Facebook page with another occupational OT global day. So we did this talk about like how important your morning routine is for your regulation. And like, she got into the science of it that like your beta waves and your theta waves, if you grab your phone first thing in the morning and start scrolling social media, you, you dysregulate yourself. You send yourself into a fight or flight response. Your brain waves go into a fight or flight response. So having a morning routine that takes like 10, 15 minutes can help set you up for success throughout the day. And that's like what you talk about, like self-care is so, so important because without the self-care, then you're in reactive mode and then you're looking for those tools and they might not work as well if you're in reactive mode. But if you're proactive and you like get up, do your routine, go to the gym if it's possible, like all of these things so that you're taking care of yourself, you're filling your cup, but like I say filling your cup, but then also like emptying part of your cup so that there's more room for what we call your window of tolerance. You increase your window of tolerance by doing all these self-care activities. Sure, with using your cup analogy, if it means making the cup bigger yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, or 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 smaller if it's if it's too big, <laughs> right? Yeah. Getting in this place where you can stay regulated more consistently. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Angela. It's so nice to like, I love sharing about this and connecting with other people. And you can find me on social media, um, I have my personal page where I share a lot of information about nervous system regulation and regulation for moms. And that's just Aaron Gruich or Aaron Mitchell Gruich, actually. Uh, but I can put the links below. Um, I have a website, which is more for my sensory bus. But on that website, I do have a free guide. Um, and that is sensationalpath.ca slash guide for moms. And I'll put the link there too. So you can grab that. And it's a lot of the things that I talked about, but some tools and, and ways to connect with me. Um, I am putting together a course with more details, like what we've talked about, but more in depth. It's going to be a mastermind for moms to help with nervous system regulation and just really understanding like what is sensory regulation and what is your sensory processing like and what tools would work for you and then like supporting you to work through those tools because you can't regulate your kids if you're not regulated and we're just seeing more and more kids who are struggling with it and I think more and more moms who are struggling with it because it's kind of a cycle right if if your kids aren't regulated then it throws you off and if you're not regulated it throws your kids off so let's start with moms 